Texas voice is Clayton Gardner. And action. Country singer-songwriter Clayton Gardner joins us at the Dixie Chicken, a place that's special for many reasons. So I have two favorite places in the world to drink a beer. It's the Dixie Chicken in Lukenbach, Texas. The Aggie artist tells us all about new music and his favorite role, Daddy. Plus, world-renowned artist Benjamin Knox reveals his new collection. These are memories. Every art piece is an inspirational memory. And we catch up with the creators of the one and only Aggie Ring. Texas Voices highlights the artists, musicians, and creatives of our great state. Next. Howdy, and welcome to the Dixie Chicken, located in the historic Northgate District in College Station, Texas. I'm Lindsay Lippman. Singer-songwriter Clayton Gardner has fans all over the world, but it's right here where his love of music began. I caught up with Clayton just before he left for Nashville to record new music, and we talked about how love, loss, and fatherhood have shaped his latest songs. I'm a little bit country, but I like the city. What does it mean to you to be a part of the Aggie community and, and what goes on here? It's very special here, I think. It is. You know, the Aggie community embraces its own kind, and it definitely did that for me musically from the start right down the street uh, here on Northgate to my days at Harry's and the Chicken and all these places. And it's just really special. And I can go to like Fort Worth or Austin, and there's still Aggies everywhere that come to see me. So it's, it's, a, it's a huge family, as you know. You could say Clayton was born to bleed maroon. He first came to Aggieland in 2004, found music, and got a guitar. I grew up in Montgomery, not too far from here. Uh, my mom was a superintendent of schools. My dad was in landscape. They're all Aggies. My oldest sister is class of 2000. My middle sister went to Texas State. She was the black sheep. And then, uh, you know, of course, I went to a &M. So my mom taught at a &M for a little while, so it was bred into me at a young age to you have one choice, and that's to be an Aggie. But you embraced it. You I were, did. You were fighting that. Did you always know that you wanted to be a songwriter and a musician, or was that something that happened later? Much later. I, I love sports. I was an athlete in high school growing up my whole life. I didn't sing. I was not a great singer. Didn't own a guitar. And then I liked it a lot more than going to school when I came here in College Station. So it was fun to go drink beer and play guitar with my friends, and it was a cool lifestyle. You cannot convince me that you weren't good at singing. I was not. We're not going to air anything, but, okay. you know, I wasn't, Any I wasn't. Old videos? I, no, no, I hope not. There's probably some stuff on YouTube, but, uh -huh. you know, I, I loved it. It was the first thing in my life that I just really stuck to and just put my nose to the grindstone and got after it. You're working on a new album, and it's been a while. So tell me what's happened in the last five to six years now. Well, I put out Under the Lights in 2015, and that record did really well for me. I was living in between College Station and Nashville, and uh, found I fell in love, and we got engaged and we had a little girl but proceeding to that I went back to school in 2016 and then my mom passed away in April of 16 and we found out we were gonna have a little baby girl or a baby the night of her funeral and then my sister passed away about six weeks before she was born and then my daughter was born in December of 16 finished school in 17 and I've been spending most of my time writing songs on the side and being a dad primarily and so did you name your daughter after your sister and your mom? I did. Mom? My sister was Jessica and my mom is Elizabeth. Her name is Jessalyn Elizabeth Gardner. Oh, that's so beautiful. I think she's getting a sense of them through me. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's all you can do. I mean, that's the hardest part. It really is. You just want your kids to know your parents, especially the good, good side of them. And um, I battle with that all the time, but she doesn't know any different, you know? So it's my job to, to relay that to her. What brought you through those dark times and those difficult times? My daughter, hands down. I didn't have a choice, you know, it was, I have to be there for her every day. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes I haven't dealt with some of that pain, but I don't have time to. It's my job to, 
you know, raise a little human and raise a good one. So that's what I focus my energy on. And music is therapy. Absolutely. I've had a trouble conveying that. I can sit down and talk to you about the pain and heartache and stuff, or even the good things, but I have trouble writing about it. It yeah. lasts forever, so it's a little harder for me, but that's what I'm working on this new record. Yeah. But I love playing music. My favorite part is people, 100%. It's not even the melodies or the lyrics. It's meeting people, seeing people, seeing how they react to your music, singing back to you, and that's just the best feeling in the world. When he crossed the stage at Reed Arena, it was a moment more than a decade in the making. That's the only reason I finished school is because I promised my mom I would finish yeah. my degree and here I am. So. Have you had little moments along the way um, in the last couple of years uh, where you felt like your, your mom and your sister were with you or were proud of you uh, for what you're, you're doing and the choices you're making? I think so. I think that's the, you know, at the end of the day you just want to make them proud. I want to make my daughter proud. Um, they're with me in my music. My mom raised me on Motown. She loved old country too. She loved Keith Whitley and Randy Travis, and Willie, yeah. all those guys. But, you know, yeah, I think they are. And especially even being here right now, first time I came to the chicken was with my sister when I was in like, I think I was in sixth grade or something, you know. I didn't drink, uh -huh. but I was here. <laughs> Good. Had a burger, had a burger. Yeah, they wouldn't serve me. I tried, not kidding. Right. Um, We've all tried. Well, I mean, this was my favorite place. I have two favorite places in the world to drink a beer. It's the Dixie Chicken in Lukenbach, Texas. And They've both been second homes to me. I, you know, I, I've known everybody affiliated with those venues for years, and they will always be my favorite places to drink a beer and play music. Clayton, we agree. Coming up, he'll perform Don't Miss It. But first, you have to catch tonight's Texas Voices artist. He used to paint a picture for a picture right here at the Dixie Chicken. Hear why Benjamin Knox says he's just getting started. Follow your heart to Waco, Texas, home of the famous Magnolia Silos, Cameron Park Zoo, Baylor University, Dr. Pepper Museum, BSR Cable Park, and so much more. Enjoy the arts, historical sites, outdoor nature, entertainment, music, food, drinks, and events in a diverse welcoming place you'll find yourself coming back to again and again. Welcome back to the Dixie Chicken. As a student, artist Benjamin Knox sold his paintings to help pay for college. Now he's painted presidents, first ladies, and even the belle of the block, the Dixie Chicken. But the world-renowned artist says he's only just scratched the surface. With a well-traveled studio box in tow, Benjamin Knox seeks his next subject, whether it takes him to the mountaintop or sandy beaches. These are memories. Every art piece is an inspirational memory. His passion for painting bubbled to the surface early, selling his first work of art in the first grade. I grew up outside of Lubbock, Texas, in the plains uh, mm -hmm. towards Brownville, and we had a horse ranch, but I always loved to draw and create. It was nonstop. I was even making movies with eight millimeter cameras. So I was kind of this enigma of this force of creativity and energy. Mm -hmm. And that's why I believe very strongly that that type of creativity and energy, it's almost like it, it moves in the clouds and then it touches certain people. Personally, I feel like it's the desire that's the gift. A young Benjamin was always awestruck by nature. So I just get on the roof to watch the storms. Love, uh -huh. love watching the, the patterns of nature and, and so forth. <laughs> One time I was, I was on the roof watching a storm and come in and I looked up and there, it was all swirling above me. But in all its beauty, nature also deals a harsh reality. Living in Colorado, the fate of one phone call may have saved his life. It was on Valentine's Day, 2.30, and they had warned me there could be an avalanche that could come down behind us. And they said, you know, you, you don't have to leave. We've had a lot of avalanches in the past. Mm -hmm. This one looks like it could be pretty big, but I don't think it will be anything major. Well, it was major. And it went through my studio and house, and I survived that. I was in it. Wow. And uh, I survived it because my nephew, he just out of the blue said, Uncle Ben's dead. And she said, no, it's just because he when he was a little kid. He mm -hmm. was like one and a half, two years old. And oh no, we'll call him up. So he called me up and I left the room <laughs> and then boom. Wow. So I kind of look at that as a uh, saving grace. Benjamin creates beauty from nothing and optimism exudes 
even in the most dire circumstances. That left us homeless, so I got a motorhome and started touring the country. <laughs> no matter where he roams, College Station is always home. I started in 1988 while I was a sophomore. I was in the Corps of Cadets, uh, Squadron 3, and completely out of funds. Um, my parents weren't able to help with my education. And so it left me in a, in a very interesting pr predicament. I didn't want to rack up a ton of student loans. And so I turned to my artwork and started selling that uh, to my buddies and various outfits to do outfit t-shirts and logos and designs and then for the university overall and it just continued to grow from there. Capturing the Aggie spirit has been a lifelong pursuit. First it was out of my dorm room, mm -hmm. so dorm six, room 210 on the quad. That was the first official studio and it's funny because uh -huh. I've heard that they use that as an example that you can't run a business out of your <laughs> dorm room. He now teaches at the university while operating his gallery and opening a new exhibit. Art has the potential to touch people in so many different ways. And using your artistic voice, as I tell my students, you know, you have a strong voice that you can say so much and you can do things that are healing. Whether a salve for souls touched by the 99 bonfire tragedy or the coming home of President Bush, who he calls a personal hero, the stories are sacred. It's one of my favorite memories is, uh, is, going, is watching a football game with him. And he was so funny because he would be, he'd be so into the game, and you, you know how he talks, he, he would say, get him, get him, get him, go, go, go. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and so it was uh -huh. fun. But then when we were doing Saul Varsity's Horns Off together, and I realized, oh my gosh, I'm doing Saul Varsity's Horns <laughs> Off with one of my heroes and uh -huh. former president of the United States. A decade's worth of work is now on display. We've all experienced so much anxiety and polarization of our country and strife and so much this past year that I thought doing something that, you know, pulled together nature and inspiration, places that inspire us. And what better places than the mountains, beaches, rivers, Texas landscapes, scenes like that. As with every Knox painting, there's always something more being said. Drawing rainbows and sunshine on a rainy day is exactly what Benjamin and wife Renee have done this season. It's been good, it's been fun. We've had a lot of good times. We have had done a lot of traveling before the pandemic and um, we've had, I mean, we, I have enjoyed it. They both embrace the spirit of the arts and adventure and the best is still yet to come. There's an artist side of me that's searching, always searching for something more, searching for truth, finding truth in beauty. People are choosing the Brazos Valley to launch, grow, and locate their companies every single day. But in the Brazos Valley, our most valuable asset is talent and their skills, their drive, their character speaks loudest. Benjamin Knox draws it and thousands of Aggies wear it. Let's go to the Balfour factory where they create the iconic Aggie ring. Catherine Greenway doesn't remember a time that the Aggie ring wasn't a part of her life. Her father and grandfather are both Aggies, and she earned her ring in 1987. You know, it was certainly an exciting time because it's something you've worked hard for. It's like following in a line of so many great people and, and knowing that you now are representing Texas A&M to the world. Every Aggie ring these days is born in Austin at the Balfour factory, a trusted partner since 1948 and the subject of a documentary underway right now from the Association of Former Students. Um, they produce Super Bowl rings, World Series rings, um, many other college rings, but the most coveted assignment in the Balfour facility in the Austin area is to work on the Aggie ring line. Each Aggie ring begins with a wax mold. They're assembled on a tree that's dipped in plaster and it bakes overnight. 
Once it's cured, the tree of rings is dipped in gold. And from there, the real work begins, and each ring is personally tended to, and the detail on the ring will be enhanced, the ring will be polished, um, the engraving will be added to the ring, and for those who choose to have their ring antiqued, the antiquing will be added to that. But there's a lot of, of hand craftsmanship that goes into it. And so, you know, each ring really is individually made. And even though the ring is the same design, there is something unique about each ring because of the hand craftsmanship. But ever since 1930, the design became uniform, making it recognizable even a world away. Do you have a favorite Aggie ring story um, that's kind of come across your radar? You know, I do have a favorite Aggie ring story. Um, there are so many that are so meaningful in so many ways, but this one is one that I think just, it covers so many aspects of the ring. And the ring starts with Turney Leonard, class of 1942. Turney Leonard died on a battlefield in Germany in World War II. He was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for his actions in World War II, and his ring was lost on that battlefield near the Hörgen Forest in Germany. Um, at the conclusion of the war, a German teenager found the ring, and he kept that ring for decades. And so decades later, he is having a conversation with his son-in-law, who is an officer in the German Army, and this was about in the year 2000. And as they talked, um, his son-in-law, Volker, said, well, you know, there's somebody who would want that ring back. We need to return that ring. So they reached out to the U.S. Army and immediately recognized it as an Aggie ring. Volker was flown to the U.S. and on a beautiful crisp fall day in Kyle Field, he presented that ring back to the Leonard family. The Leonard family then presented the ring to Texas A&M and it's now housed in the Corps of Cadets Center um, along with Turney Leonard's Medal of Honor. And I always tell people that's a beautiful story, but it doesn't end there. That's the best part of that. So as a result of Volker's trip to the U.S., he became friends with a group of Aggies, a group of former students. And over the course of several years, these former students would visit Germany, Volker and his family would visit the States, and a beautiful friendship developed out of this. And these men said to Volker, we want your sons to be Texas Aggies. And so they helped to pay for the education of Volker's two sons, who are classes of 16 and classes of 20. And so, so these two Aggies from Germany now have their own Aggie ring. And I think it's just such a beautiful connection of the past, the future, um, you know, it, it touches on the service of Aggies to the military, how Aggies have fought for freedom, and how now the Aggie network is truly a global and international phenomenon. In the Aggie ring collection at the Association of Former Students, a story for every ring worn and symbolism that dates back more than a century. On the sides, you have the star, which symbolizes the state of Texas, the, the state seal. Um, you also have on the star, you have oak leaves and laurel leaves. And these symbolize a desire for peace, but the strength to fight. And these are, are joined together with a ribbon, which symbolizes the necessity of both of these traits. The state and U.S. flags, a rifle, cannon, and saber that symbolizes that Texans fought for their independence and land. All of these things together, you know, remind us of the history of the ring and also um, what we represent when we wear this ring. Stay tuned for Dixie Chicken Stories and a special performance from Clayton Gardner you don't want to miss. I can throw back a cold beer, I'll sip on a cabinet and for a little less time and work. A lot more time to play I like old cool guitars New set of strings Yeah, it's just me well, I believe in love I believe in praying When things get tough I believe in staying Well, I ain't got much But I got all I need don't really care what you think, cause that's just me. Yeah, I 
Yeah, take the trip, beat the cane, get up early and stay out late. Life's short, man, shoot your shot. Come and take it, I wish they try. I don't like to fight, but I'll take a swing. Cause I ain't afraid to bleed. Ain't never gonna change. I'm too stuck in my ways. But I don't give a damn, cause that's just me. Yeah, I don't give a damn, cause that's just me. Good times and great memories. Let's check in with Adam Drake for this week's Dixie Chicken Stories. Howdy. Thanks, Lindsay. You know, Dixie Chicken Stories are something that's just been going on since 1974. I'm glad to have my buddy here, Clayton Gardner, because he's we've, we've shared a few stories back here at the Dixie Chicken, but man, there's one I really want to ask you about specifically, and, and I, I know it's it, it can be a little hard for people to bring this up, but you know, it did come across my Facebook memories just a while back. You playing the back porch of the Dixie Chicken and your mom and your sister, basically your whole family, mm -hmm. just out here hanging out. Man, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we were doing a, a sorority event called Run to the Chicken. It was in 2016, and my whole family, I can still picture it. They were right back there by the statue, yeah. watched the whole show. And it was important to me because I grew up in Aggie, and, uh, you know, the Dixie Chicken was revered and still is, and it was really awesome. My big sister was kind of like my mom, so I wanted to make her proud, and she was so happy that I was playing the Dixie Chicken that day. And she's the one that you were here with when you were sixth grade, seventh grade, mm -hmm. hanging out, thinking, oh, man, look how cool I am hanging out at the Dixie Chicken. Yep. And so that was one of those things I remember you looking out and saying, man, that's that's really fun to be a part of. Absolutely, man. The chicken has been a you know a huge place in my family, but regardless of where I travel and where I go, people are like, oh, you're an Aggie? You ever been to the chicken? I'm like, yes, of course I've been to the chicken. I'm an Aggie, you know? You know, a lot of Aggies have stories of the Dixie chicken. A lot of non-Aggies have stories of the Dixie chicken. And, you know, I'm glad that you were able to share one of yours, my friend. So yes, sir. cheers to you. Cheers to Dixie chicken cheers. stories. Thanks for joining us on Texas Voices. Connect with us on social media and at TexasVoicesShow.com. Now let's hear one more song from Clayton Gardner. We'll see you next week. The last lap of a NASCAR race the first furs of amazing grace The way the sunlight hits your face in the morning Your first car when you turn 16 Spring break down on the beach Learning to mix rum with Coca-Cola That kind of good stuff goes by fast So hold on to every minute your life. You better live it, drink it up, smoke them if you got them, if you got them, if you got them. Don't let nothing get past you. Stomp on the gas. Go a little faster, take the chance. And if you give giving one shot, don't miss it. The encore at a Garth Brooks show. Hold her tight as the thunder rolls She's the one, don't you let her go for nothing Call your mommy every chance you have Make a little time to fish for dad Make them sure you tell them that you love them Yeah, hold on to every minute is your life You better live it, drink it up, smoke them if you got them if you got them, if you got them, don't let nothing get past you. Stomp on the gas, go a little faster, take the chance. And if you give it one shot, don't miss it. That kind of good stuff. So hold on to every minute is your life. 
You better live it, drink it up, smoke them if you got them, if you got them. Oh, don't let nothing get past you, stomp on the gas, go a little faster, take the chance. And if you give in one shot, you don't miss it. If you got them. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate you.